a very important thing for him was coming to feel his disability as a sensibility. And this did occur with him with a natural scene about three months after his head injury, when one morning he was driving to work in, in, a, in a rather depressed state. And when something happened, the sun rose. And for him, he couldn't see reds. Reds were very dark and almost black. And this, this black, huge thing, he said, was like some enormous nuclear explosion, this apocalyptic sunrise. He wondered whether anyone in the history of the planet had ever seen a sunrise with such eyes or such vision before. And he went and did his first painting, his real first black and white painting. This, I think, is a haunting painting. I think it shows some of the, uh, the turmoil he was in at the time. Everything is controlled in these rectangular boxes. He is sort of trying to, to hold a chaos, an unworld, in some sort of formal order. You know, he tried so hard to get color back. There was one point I would see him glare glare at an orange to imagine its color back, but it didn't work. This is all that happened. His brain couldn't construct color anymore. Um, but um, this, this, this weird, spooky fruit a sort of is, is, a, is a wonderful souvenir of, of his state, I think. But of course, it's a completely different thing, never having seen color. Because then you would simply, from the start, create a visual world on the basis of what you have. And you wouldn't be pining or yearning for something which you once had, but have now lost. Here in this mute, discreet black and white landscape with the faint effigies of trees here, I think this must be you know, in some ways close to Knut's world. One thing I think you both have in common, this came up last night when you said you were so comfortable yeah. uh, at night. You said, this is my time. And you yes. yourself said, you know, I'm just like Jonathan I. Yes. He became a night person. Indeed, and liked to roam around in cities, walking the streets during the night. Tonight, coming along the, the dark road, Bob and I followed Knut's white shirt. He could see. Uh, he was at home in the, in the dark twilight and in the dusk and in the night. And um, I believe that there's something similar here on the island. The achromatopic people who find the brilliant daylight difficult are at home in the night fishing and in the twilight. And at this point, they become the able ones, and the rest of us become disabled. Night time, night fishing. It's my time, really. It's perfect. The not too bright light can have my eyes completely open. I can see the breakers there at the reef. Um, now, of course, the movie lights will blind me slightly because you have to use them because your film is not sensitive enough. <laughs> Any planets or stars? Oh, yeah, there is this beautiful big star up there, which I think is Venus. What you should be able to see now is my fully extended pupils, and you will see not, none of the squinting you have seen in, in some of the other acromats here. Unlike Knut, I couldn't make out what was going on at all. On Pingalap, I had come close to understanding something of the world of the colorblind. Terms like achromatopia, literally no color vision, emphasize what is missing. But the experience of the night fishing has shown me that these people are a valued part of the community.
we had a few days to wait on the neighboring island of Pompeii for a commercial flight home. I took the opportunity to plunge into an orgy of color experience, tantalized by the hope that here, among these coral reefs, I might once again see indigo. I did not find my sublime color, although the blue of a starfish came close. Knut is denied everything with colors, right up to this sort of rapture I was searching for. One wonders what the areas of the brain which are normally dedicated to color are doing in Knut. In general, one doesn't have areas which lie idle in the brain. If an area can't be used for one function, it tends to be reallocated for another. I think Knut is perhaps more sensitive than the rest of us to other qualities in the visual world, like form, contrast, and movement. After my swim, we took the boat onto Nan Madol, an ancient megalithic city of nearly a hundred artificial islands. I was struck by the vast hexagonal blocks and wondered who could have brought them here and how were they levered into position. <laughs> Knut was drawn to the geometry of their stacking. I asked him whether the monochromatic architecture appealed to his sense of form. Silhouette and form I can perceive probably just as well as you can, except maybe for the smallest detail. So I can enjoy sculpture, architecture, and the general forms of landscape. I was taken by the massive grey calm of the place. The word grey often has connotations of the dull, dismal, and devitalized. Was this the case for Knut? Yes, yes. Grey is the way I try to explain to other people what I see. And one way of explaining is to say they are all greys. I could just as well probably say that all I see is yellow. I've never seen a, a stacking like this, and it's, it's quite unlike any other architecture. It does convey a feeling of, of, the, of the alien and the other or perhaps just the, the diversity of the human. I mean, there's another form of life. Yeah. How can a great culture like this vanish? Disease, boredom, psychosis? Inbreeding? What happened to them? Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>